Hey, God bless you. Welcome to my channel. I'm excited for today's video because I know that God's going to speak to your life. The theme of today's video is this. God's forgiveness is waiting for you. So make sure you pay attention. Watch this video the whole way through because I know that God's going to speak to your life. We're going to start reading from the book of Luke chapter 23, verse 34 through 38. This is when Jesus is hanging on the cross. And look what he says. This is why I get the title. God's forgiveness is waiting for you. Look what Jesus says. While he's hanging on the cross, while he's in extreme pain, look what Jesus says. And Jesus said, Father, he's talking to his heavenly father, our heavenly father. He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. They were gambling for his clothes. That's a symbol of mockery. And the people stood by watching, but the ruler scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. As he is the Christ of God, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one, let him save himself. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. What were they doing? Mocking him, making fun of him, humiliating him. They were having a good time while he was having a Horrible time while he was suffering on the cross. Everybody was just rejoicing. They were seeing him crucified and they were so evil and they were feeling so good. Like, yeah, that's what he gets. He thought he was all cool. He thought he was the Christ. He thought he was the anointed one. The epitome of what being a hater is. They were hating him and they were loving the pain that he was going through. They were loving the suffering that he was going through. But what did Jesus say? Father, Forgive them. They don't know what they do. Now I want to read you something from the book of Acts. This is over a month after Jesus was crucified and resurrected. And look what Peter tells some of the same people that were mocking him and making fun of him. And the same people that Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Acts 3, 17 through 19. Look what Peter says. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. You know what Peter is saying? Jesus said, forgive them. They don't know what they do. What is Peter saying? I know you acted in ignorance. And then look what he tells him. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, this he has fulfilled. And then look what Peter tells him, verse 19. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out. What did Peter say? He says, look, I know you acted in ignorance, but now this is what you need to do. You need to repent and turn back so that your sins can be blotted out. What must the person do when they come to the realization that they were living in error? Repent. Repent. And then look what Peter says. So that your sins can be blotted out, wiped away. When someone repents of their sins to the Lord, you know what God does? He blots them out. He wipes them away. And you might say, but I'm not acting in ignorance. No, listen. Of course you're not acting in complete ignorance because you need to know what you're doing to do what you're doing people need to know what they're doing just to drink water you need to know what you're doing but you can be living in ignorance there's a lot of people who don't see the the seriousness of their sin there's a lot of people who don't see the severity of the lifestyle that they're living the consequences that can happen there's a lot of people that don't understand the judgment of the Lord. There's a lot of people who don't fully understand what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. There's a lot of people that don't understand spiritual warfare and that the devil is really out there like a lion seeking someone to devour. There's a lot of people that don't under understand that and they're playing with sin. You know what that is? That's ignorance. They're living in ignorance. They're doing what they're doing on purpose, deliberately, yes. They're practicing what they're practicing on purpose, deliberately, yes. But they're ignorant to the seriousness and the judgment that is waiting for those sins. But then that same person who was doing things on purpose, but they were doing them out of ignorance because they don't understand the seriousness of it. Then that person, when they feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit, because only the Holy Spirit can convict you. Listen to this. Let me show you the difference between conviction and condemnation. Because the devil, he'll disguise condemnation like conviction. Let me show you the difference. Conviction comes only from God. And conviction takes you to repent and walk right with God. It takes you to go ask God for forgiveness. But condemnation also makes you feel bad for your sins. And that's why a lot of people, they misunderstand it. Conviction makes you feel bad for your sins, but turns you to God. Condemnation makes you feel bad for your sins, but then condemns you. And says, you're a hypocrite. You're unworthy. You, you, you're not good enough. 
you, you failed God so much. How can you continue to live a Christian life if you're failing God so much? You might as well just walk away. You might as well just quit. You see the difference? You feel bad for your sins with condemnation and conviction. But conviction makes you understand, man, I've been failing God. I need to repent and I need to walk towards the Lord. Condemnation makes you feel bad for your sins, but you say, but the devil tells you when you feel condemnation, but I'm a hypocrite. I'm not good enough. I need to just quit. Why even continue to try? I'm just making a mockery of things. They look similar, but conviction takes you to God. Condemnation wants to take you away from God. Conviction comes from the Holy Spirit. Condemnation comes from the devil. See, the devil will tempt you and then if a person falls into that temptation, then the devil will condemn you for that. That's the difference between condemnation and conviction. But when that person, let's get back to what I was saying, but when that person who was living a deliberate life of sin hears the conviction of the Holy Spirit or hears a message or reads the Bible or one day the Lord just hits them in their heart and then they realize, whoa, man, what I've been doing is against God. How I've been living is against God. Man, I've been failing the Lord. You know what Peter says? Repent and your sins will be blotted out. I want to let you know that Jesus was ready to forgive people who were not even wanting to repent. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. He forgave people for something they didn't even repent of. You know what he was doing by that? He was already preparing a way for them so that when they did come to that realization that they did something wrong, forgiveness could be waiting for them. The prayer that Jesus prayed on the cross for those people, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. It became real. It manifested a little over a month later when Peter is preaching to them in the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. He tells them, I know you acted in ignorance. Therefore, repent, turn back so that your sins can be blotted out. I want to ask you a question. Were you living an unpurposed, sinful lifestyle? But now hearing these words, you're like, man, maybe I've been living wrong. Man, how I've been living is against the Lord. Man, I've been failing God. I want to let you know that forgiveness is waiting for you. All you need to do is repent. Ask the Lord, Lord, forgive me for my sins. I've been living a wrong lifestyle. I've been doing things that go against you, Lord. And you know what the Bible says? He will blot out your sins. He will erase your sins. I want to read you something else. Look what the Bible says here. James chapter 2, verse 12 to 13. So speak and act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. He says, speak and act like you're being judged under the law of liberty. Not under the law of Moses, under the law of liberty. He's telling the man, stop acting like you're under the law. Act and live like you're being judged under the law of liberty. You know what he's telling by that? There was nothing you ever did to bring salvation to your life. So stop living a life like if you're bringing your own salvation. Live your life understanding that the only thing that brought you salvation was what Jesus did for you on the cross. And then look what he tells me. So speak and act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. Look what he says. This is very important. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. You know why he's saying act and live like you're being judged under the law of liberty? Like understand that nothing about you brought you salvation. Only Jesus brought you salvation because he tells them this. He says people who judge without mercy, they themselves will be shown no mercy. God's going to say, oh, okay, you, you, you're living your life like you're saved under your own works. And you're being very judging, very condemning. You're showing no mercy. You're showing no grace. People want to repent, but you write them off. People feel sorry for their sins, but you say, no, you can never be forgiven. No, God can never do nothing with you again. You felt the Lord already three times. Three strikes, you're out. He says, if you're living like that, God's going to show you no mercy. But then look what he says here. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. And then look what he says. Mercy triumphs over judgment. You know what James is telling these people? You want to do things the right way? Show mercy. You know what mercy is? Mercy is different than grace. Grace is when God gives you something you don't deserve. You know what mercy is? Mercy is when God doesn't give you what you do deserve. See, grace is when God gives you something good. Mercy is when God doesn't give you the judgment you do deserve. And the Bible is saying mercy always triumphs over judgment. God has shown you mercy. God has shown me mercy. I want to let you know that forgiveness is already waiting for you. 
All you need to do is what Peter told the people. Repent and God will blot out your sins. I hope this video was a blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I post weekly videos that I hope and pray will be a great encouragement to your life. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or for this video, you can do so by a feature at the bottom of the screen called Super Thanks. Those are greatly appreciated. Those are always a great blessing to my life. And also, thank you for everyone who has shown their appreciation through Super Thanks. Those are a great blessing. Thank you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing. Have a blessed day.